I am honoured to join with you all today as we remember and pay tribute to all those who have lost their lives while serving in Angartha Shakona over the last 101 years. I'm particularly pleased that so many family members and friends of those whose lives and service are being recalled are present as we share with you in remembering your loved ones, as we together publicly recognize not only the sacrifice which they, the serving officers we recall, have made, but also those sacrifices made by you, their families, through your support and understanding of their time given to the public welfare, a time given beyond their families. As a society, we owe a particular debt of gratitude to all those who serve in Angartha Shakona and in each of our emergency services. All those who commit their working lives to Angartha Shakona contribute to the public good, the public space, the shared world, protecting our citizens from harm and assisting them day in, day out, but more importantly, in what are often for citizens and communities their darkest most painful moments. As President of Ireland, on behalf of all of the people of Ireland, I thank them for their service. In remembering those taken in the most sudden of circumstances, in some cases most brutally, we are reminded of the bravery which is represented by all of those who have committed their lives to public safety, knowing that on any given day, they may find themselves in the gravest of circumstances. The work of Angartha Shakona over the last 100 years cannot be captured in any brief summary, nor in any narrow account or definition of policy. It includes all of the work of all those who have served in our communities over the last century, providing, as they did, in so many practical and intangible ways, that comfort which so many have experienced in their moments of gracious loss, and from day to day assisting and protecting us, not only when the worst calamities arise, but when they are being prepared, threatened, or feared. Those members whose lives and services are being recalled and honored by the monument we stand before today includes each of those members of Angartha Shakona murdered in the line of duty. It calls to memory too those who lost their lives while rescuing others from our waters are assisting the public, suffering, distressed and displaced in times of flooding or again during the COVID-19 pandemic, while responding to emergency calls and at so many times and in differing conditions which we have collectively and individually faced. 
so Tresliam Lo, may I commend on Garda Shakona for extending the monument's reach beyond its original conception, including, as it now does, the names of all those members and staff of Garda Shakona who have lost their lives in whatever circumstances while serving in the organization, each one leaving behind, as they did, grieving families, close friendships, and community members. This is a deeply appropriate measure, while there is an outpouring of national loss each time a member of Ankara Shikona is killed in the line of duty. The personal and collective grief experienced by all those who lose an individual at a young age in any circumstance has a devastating effect on their colleagues, their community, and most of all, their family. As President of Ireland, I have, in recent years, many times traveled to parts of Ireland where some of our citizens, their families and communities are experiencing deep trauma following a tragic loss of loved ones. In such circumstances, the Gardaí are so often at the forefront of those who are called on to help and support us as we deal with personal and communal devastation. It is therefore all the more upsetting to any community to lose such important members of their community in whom they have come to place their trust. For each community that has lost a serving Garda to any illness or in any circumstances, there is a deep feeling of loss. It is a loss that goes beyond that of the immediate, their immediate family and reaches deep into the communities in which they have given service. It is so appropriate too, as I have said, that the monument recalls not just Garda members but also Garda staff. It is a welcome recognition of the commitment to the public shown by all those who have lost their lives in service beyond the ranks of sworn personnel. For the families of those working in Ongarda Shikona, to which I have made reference, a death while in service is the ultimate loss in a career which, as I have already noted, has been defined by great personal and family sacrifice. As each Garda family and their friends that are gathered here today knows, there is both tremendous pride in sharing your loved one with their vocation, but also a considerable weight. For many it has involved a migration, leaving your home community, your immediate family and friends. It is a life of knowing that each day your loved one may face incomprehensible challenges, not just physically but mentally and emotionally. The knowledge that their job will demand that they cannot always be there when you may wish them to be for your circumstances, but that they must be there daily for families throughout your adopted communities. It is that willingness to give beyond the self to earn trust in the broadest sense of serving the community that I believe is the strength of Ungarda Shikona. It is a tradition not simply or narrowly of coercive control, but of community support and service and advice and interaction. As we are all aware, Ungarda Shikona emerges from a complex history, inevitably complex in the sense of the historical events of the times. There were often difficult relationships which the public experienced and would come to experience with the different policing organizations of those decades. <clears throat> of its birth at the onset of a time of civil war itself and in the complex early days of the organization itself. From that complex history, and indeed informed by it, emerged a police service to which we have been able to entrust our safety. The transition to a largely unarmed civil authority when it came is an important part of the history of the foundation of the state itself. And Ungarda Shikona has proven itself through its history as an organization to which so many citizens have been happy to place their trust, turn to, acknowledge assistance. It is important too that we remember that throughout our history, achieving trust, being accepted as a defender of the public good, has been and remains a continuing challenge. There have been those who have not always felt 
that the police service represented them or was on their side. There are, I recognize, particular communities and groups who felt at times that they have not been as protected as they should. I very much welcome then the work which Rangata Shikona has been doing and is doing today to demonstrate, for example, to our traveling community, to our young people, to our migrant populations, and to all those marginalized groups who may have held or who hold such jobs that they too are being served by Ungarda Shakona, are represented by them, protected by them, and indeed must have a place, I believe, in serving within Ungarda Shakona. The inheritors of the tradition to which I have referred are today's Garda members and staff, women and men who play such a vital role as community Gardi, serving our young and diverse society, protecting victims of domestic violence, dealing with the new challenges which we face, from white-collar crime to cybersecurity, new and revived forms of discrimination and abuse, and all those other means by which our safety can be put at risk. I welcome the work which has been done between our Garda Shikona and other police services towards ensuring that we each learn what is best practice in working with all sections of our populations towards our collective safety and in ever-changing circumstances. Indeed, I was very pleased that one of the earliest receptions which I was able to hold after being elected as President of Ireland, was to welcome those participating in the Sixth European Gay Police Association Conference to Aurus and Uthron in 2012. <clears throat> it is in building that inclusive, open, diverse society to which we all aspire, in providing safety, comfort, and the assurance of a life without harassment or harm, that we can most appropriately honour the 1,800 women and men named on this monument, which will be rededicated later today. On behalf of the people of Ireland, may I thank all of you, their family members, for sharing them with us as they dedicated their lives to our service. We remain in their debt and in yours. Shirkon Shiri. Thank you.